All right, good morning. Welcome to Yap. Today is a little different. It's a first for me. Today is a solo podcast, so I'm really hoping that you guys are going to be the co-hosts. So if you've got 20 minutes to spare, please stay on. Let's talk. It's going to be a rough 20 minutes if it's just me talking to myself. So good morning, good morning, good morning. Let's talk about it. Um, all right. Do I have a funny story for you guys today? No. But yesterday, I sat in the office a bit later um, with a couple people, and I get a phone call from Connor. Connor is a videographer in the team, and he calls me twice. I don't pick up his phone call, right? Next thing I know, this random number is calling me. So I'm like, okay, I guess my phone's in my hand. I guess I'll pick up now. (coughs) And I pick up, and guess who it is, guess who it is, guess who it is. It's the freaking gym PT, bro. It's the gym PT. It's the gym PT. He called my number, and he said, "Where you at?" And I was like, "Bro, I'm not, I'm not doing this. So it'll be a bit shaky if I go to the gym today. Hope I don't run into him. Uh, but if I do, if he's watching this, hi Jack. I'll, I'll be here today. So um, yeah. Anyways." How you guys feeling? How we doing? Does he still work? Chat, did you hear that? Bolo, talk to me. Bolo, talk to me. Talk to me. I've got 19 minutes of doing this on my own, so please talk to me, Bolo. Or Daniel now. Got a name change? What happened? All right, all right, all right. All right, let's get into it. <clears throat> Your attention, please. The newsletter. Subscribe. Now, um, today's topics is really interesting because it covers, the first article anyway, covers Trump and how he almost got took off the map. Um, Daniel, we'll talk about the gym in a bit, in, a, in, a, in just a tiny bit. Let me get this Trump stuff out of the way. So, Trump almost got assassinated. Uh, everybody knows this by now. But I think the interesting thing is that the news article covers is that... Um, how the advertising industry has reacted to it. So, like, obviously, Trump got was so close to being assassinated, right? And obviously no one wants anybody to... Right? So, the second that happened, obviously, I don't know about you guys, so, like, I'm, I'm a little bit into clothing and stuff. Like, my TikTok for you page is a bit into that. So, I saw a bunch of TikTok lives with integrated, like, TikTok shops. And they were promoting T-shirts with that, like, I guess, infamous or iconic photo w- on it. And it, it was him going like this. And, yeah, people were obviously printed it on T-shirts or mugs and everything. And, yeah, I don't know. Um, it's a little interesting because, 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 because platforms like Meta or Instagram, it's owned by Meta or, like, Google, like, YouTube and just Google search ads and stuff are now promoting these products um, that are reactive to the thing that just happened. So I think T-shirts, think mugs, anything with just Trump on it, the, the most recent incident happened, and it had, it had that little image on it. And now obviously people are, some of it is low-key turning into extremism, so it's a little, it's a little shaky. And so platforms like Meta and Google have to now kind of like manage the thin line between earning profits because obviously the ads are being paid for by the people. So Meta is still making money off the quote-unquote incident, right? And then the other part of it is the ethics and moral morals part of it. <clears throat> God damn, why do I have to die right now, bro? <sighs> um... So yeah, what do you guys think about what happened with Trump? Yeah, the whole fist up Trump thing. Um, people are like obviously advertising it now, and it's going it's going harder than ever. People are pushing for it, and it's just I don't know. It's a little interesting because obviously, like, do do platforms like Meta and Google have a responsibility to um, kind of be the gatekeepers of their ads, or is it more of a case of like? Oh, I have this ad I want to put on your platform. I have the money for it, so you'll put it on your platform no matter what. I think there's definitely, there's got to be some sort of policy that they can't just promote any and everything. 
because even what's it called? I know the Democrats presidential campaign had a fifty million dollar campaign, and they put a pause on it just after what happened to Trump because they they wanted to lower the temperature, quote unquote. So I don't know. It's it's really interesting. Um, fifty million dollar advertising blitz is now on pause just to lower the temperature of the poli- of the political. Of the political environment right now, which is crazy. X is full of it. And now people are scared, not just advertisers of like right wing or left wing, not just even political advertisers. Advertisers are scared that their stuff is going to show up like around surrounding content that is just out there. So like, let's say if it's stuff like that's kind of like a little bit right wing extremism, you don't want like I'm assuming most ads or a lot of ads, a lot of products, a lot of brands don't want their ads on that kind of content, especially on YouTube and stuff. We know like back in the day when like PewDiePie said that one word and suddenly all the advertisers pulled out because it was a bad look to have your ad play before a YouTube clip of PewDiePie saying that one word. You know what I mean? You just, yeah. The main thing is to just keep monitoring and like adapting to the the platform's policies. I, I think it's really important to just keep an eye on that because bro, it's it's a really, it's a really, really, really um what's the word when it's like shaky? It's a really shaky environment right now. Um didn't Zuckerberg get sued for what do you get sued for, Daniel? Talk to me. It's weird calling you Daniel now after seeing that profile photo. If you change the profile photo, I'd get bolo at my head, but Yeah, I remember especially in 2016, they had, um, there was a thing with Facebook when um, they had gotten sued for, what's it called? It's Britannica something, Britannica Intelligence, where basically they had leaked or they had sold all their users' information to have targeted ads for these people on Facebook. So like if you were in the middle or if you were leaning a little bit to the left, the Democrats would know that and they would uh, push out all these ads at you just to promote and just to get you kind of over the line because it's usually the voters in between that um that make the make the final decision quote unquote um so yeah it's a crazy time in social media it's a crazy time in politics politics is fucking exhausting i'll say that politics is exhausting it's not cool hello carter how's it going carter if you're in here come in if you're in the office come inside pause um but yeah man shout out politics i guess shout out politics you guys into politics i'm not into politics man it's uh, it's too overwhelming overwhelming as some would say and yeah i think the main thing if yeah on the sway yeah on the sway voters or sway states that's when um that's when the election really gets um made up and um yeah i think the main thing if you're like a brand owner that's pushing ads you got to be careful on exactly where your ads are being pushed on to um you want to you want to really tread carefully with how your ads are perceived because like if they're associated with like right wing or super left wing extremist content then your brand is going to get that reputation and it's hard it's super hard to escape that reputation so it's really important to be super, super, super meticulous about where your content, where your ads even like go. Um, but yeah, that was that was the state of the political states, I guess. Um, shout out, shout out, you man, man. Um, the next thing we want to talk about real quick, just before we get out of here, We've got like what ten minutes now. Um, actually, let's have an intermission, guys. How are you feeling? Talk to me. If you're watching this right now, how you doing? I just stopped. <laughs> Let me drink some water, man. My throat is dry. Hold Bolo or Daniel, can I ask why the name change? Hey, guys, if you're watching, I'm recording the Yeah Podcast right now. This is the Yeah Podcast. Like and subscribe. Jake says, Stan gives off toxic vibes as an employer. Um, Not really. I'm biased because I am employed by Stan, so I don't know. What do I know? Um, but again, like, you can, 
like the whole gives off thing is just like so inaccurate. Like you, you've never, if you've never stepped into the office, if you've never worked with the man, the TikTok personality is not what's in the office. I hate to break it to you. I'm sorry to pull the curtain back a little bit, but they have exaggerated or like um, defining personas in the office that are exaggerated on camera. Obviously, no one's going to be the exact same version of themselves 100% on camera that they are in person. Me, this is not me in the office regularly. It is for the most part, actually, but I guess there's a little bit of a, like a, oh, let me perform, let me talk, let me present, let me host kind of thing. Um, So, yeah, Stan, if you heard that, I'm going to clip that and maybe give you a pay rise for that, maybe. I don't know. It's just, just an idea. Daniel says, politics is interesting, but the publicity is scary. Um, What do you mean? What's What's scary about publicity? What do you mean? Daniel, talk to me. Uh, Jake says, that's great. A social media mask is often very hard to see who's underneath it all. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But again, it's just like, it's it's really like, obviously, like, again, I'm just going to like have to repeat what I just said. But like, obviously, what you see on camera is not what you, is not the human you deal with. That's just like a, a 10 minute segment of their 24 hours. You don't really work with them like eight hours. And then that's where you see where like you really the person really is because you really can't fake being in the office eight hours a day, five days a week. And then it's really hard to like fake a persona for that long, that consistently anyway. So you'll, you'll slip up so often that it's going to be, you're going to get found out really quick. Um, Yeah, for sure. Daniel, I, yeah. Uh, Daniel says, talking about your opinions publicly, absolutely. It's scary. It's super vulnerable. Um, but I think that you... Obviously, you shouldn't say just anything off the top of your head. That's for one. I think the other thing is that you've got to remember as crazy and as wild as the thing that you're about to say might come off, there's a community of people that think the way you think. As scary as that sounds. That might be even that might be even scarier that there's like a, a group of people that think the same thoughts that you think. But there's a bit of a, I don't know, solace or like safety in that that you can fall back on. Uh, I mean, you can still be a minority and think like you can have like a minority idea or a minority mindset. But if you whatever you think, there's too many people on this earth for you not to have the same thoughts in common with another person or a group of people anyway. Um, shall we get into the next article, boys and girls? This next article is pretty interesting because um, it covers Roblox and I'm a fan of Roblox. Do you guys game? Do you guys play Roblox at all? Um Roblox, so basically Roblox is in the news for um, basically um, show like advertisers are now advertising through unconventional methods rather than just your regular like billboard or regular TV ad. <coughs> yeah, um, I have a little brother that plays Roblox damn near every day. He, I don't know why he's always in these like old block servers. At, for, it's so funny and fun. Loki, it's a little fun. I might, I might give it a go one day. Um, and so, yeah, it's basically, it's really interesting because Roblox has become like a platform that people are advertising through. So, like, I don't know if you guys remember this, but back in the day, not back in the day, like a couple, I remember like two, three, four, I, I, my mind is blurry, but I remember like years ago, there was a new season of Keeping Up with the Kardashians that just came out. And the season, like, premiere trailer thing had Kim crying because her son found an ad for her tape on the game, inside the game. Which was crazy. I didn't know people could just, like, advertise anything and everything. I don't know if you guys... Do you guys remember that at all? I remember a couple years back when, yeah, Kim was, like, crying to Kanye on the phone the whole nine because her son had found that people were advertising Kim's tape in the game. Which is crazy. Um, and also, like, not just that. So, like, you could... Because that, put, put, that was put on a billboard um, in there. And um, the other point is that Roblox... Apparently, apparently, bro. Roblox has a market cap of $25 billion. How the hell does that happen? I don't know. But I want a piece of that pie, bro. $25 billion? 
Because in my head, Roblox was always like a, not like a niche game, but like, a, I mean, I guess it's some sort of a niche game. It was always like a smaller game that like only iPad kids would play. Uh, it's crazy that now I'm like my brother plays it on the PS4 like damn near full time when he's on school holidays. Um, I think the other thing is the other thing that they've also done well is that they've collaborated with advertisers to like create like full fledged games. So like I know a couple years back, <clears throat> they came up with a world. Or, uh, is it a world or like a server? I think I guess it's a world when they um. What the fuck? Well, Daniel says WTF was advertisement just not monitored. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. It was it was a crazy concept. Hey, Katsura, what's up? What's up? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I don't know. I don't know how that slipped through the cracks. But, um, yeah, basically, um, I remember the other thing that they had was they had a burrito. What's it called? Let me get this right. Chipotle had... Chipotle worked with Roblox to make a burrito builder world. So, like, you know how, like, the pizza games that we used to do? The, I don't, what do you even call those anymore? The pizza games? Now, you could be an actual worker in Roblox making the um, Chipotles for other virtual users. And you could actually earn virtual, like, virtual money or virtual rewards through that. And eventually, you could use some of those, like, virtual rewards to cash in in like in on chipotle's website which is insane yeah like ikea ikea just yeah i remember because a couple months ago ikea came out with that they're looking for actual real life virtual workers in roblox which is still insane for me like what did they get out of that i don't know katsura do you know if ikea's idea is any better or any different like how is it better it's really interesting. Like, what would you even do as an IKEA worker in Roblox? Do you just what move furniture? Do you build it? Could you potentially build it? Yeah, yeah. It's definitely yeah. Cause there, cause I know the people that work in the IKEA for Roblox would have gotten paid real money, which is really interesting. That like you'd be working, in a, you'd be working in a virtual game, but you'd be getting paid for it. So it's like. Is it really gaming at that point, or is it more like work? If you get paid, like, let's say, like as Katsura said, let's say you get paid like $17 an hour to work in this game. Is it still gaming? I don't know. I don't know. But it's a very lucrative industry. Like, I know just from, just, from, just like Fortnite, like, bro, just from their NFL skins, they made up to $50 million just from the NFL skins just from the NFL skins. You can like you can have to go back to think like what happened to, like with the Travis Scott skins, all the all the all the events, all the rewards and stuff. It's insane, man. Um so Roblox, if you're watching this, sponsor me maybe? Bro, I'll play the game happily. Just freaking pay me, dude. Pay me. Uh sponsor this podcast, please. Um guys, this will be the end of the podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening. I really appreciate you. Um this was a little different because it, it's a solo episode, but um, I, it was kind of cool, you know. Um, it kind of reminds me of Emma Chamberlain's podcast. I used to listen to it, and she would just, like, speak for an hour and a half on her own. And I don't know how she could do that. I barely did 20 minutes today. But obviously, there's always room for improvement. Um, thank you guys so much uh, for tuning in. We're, we're here this time tomorrow. Make sure you tune in. Uh, we're here this time tomorrow at 8 a.m. New Zealand time. Um, Search the Yap Podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. Um, subscribe to Your Attention, please. Just Google Your Attention, please. It's a newsletter. It's a daily newsletter that you can subscribe to. And, um, yeah, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you. Thank you for not making this a very miserable experience. And, um, yeah, we'll see you this time tomorrow. We'll have two new hosts. See ya. Goodbye.